Okay, I start recording and then and so I'm not gonna uh, turn on light because I mean if you turn on light it's hard to see it from the from the online so I'm not gonna uh, turn on the light but I hope you can uh, so one question student asks that the uh, so the choice of gamma matrix uh, uh, is like this and then jump on. So in person server difference, so this is sometimes called wall or color basis. On the other hand, uh, there is a choice something like a gamma zero, which is sometimes as far as I remember, gamma i is equal to minus sigma i, sigma i, and then uh, gamma z, uh, gamma pi. Is one more as far as I remember. Yeah. So this is called uh, Dirac basis. Uh, Dirac basis. Now, of course, the physics should be independent of choice of uh, basis, and it, the question is how to go one or the other. Uh, one, one. How to go one to the other? So the in fact the gamma mu. Wall basis is u uh, gamma Dirac basis u, where u is equal to uh, u is equal to one minus gamma plus Dirac gamma zero Dirac over two. So that's the um, not not over two. Sorry, square root two. If you do that, so you can go back, uh, go from uh, Dirac to Wall, Wall to Dirac basis. So therefore, physics should be independent of the, the, the basis. And then, yeah. So students, is, uh, the, or oh, some people mentioned something. The image, image rather, rather vague. Unfortunately, I cannot change the, Does it become better? Does it become better? Students. Uh, is it okay? Hopefully it's okay. Or is it? See, I don't want to move the camera because, I mean, if you move the camera. <laughs> Unfortunately, you're okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if you, it's a bit unstable. Sorry. Sorry about it. No, it's unstable. Unfortunately. Okay, let's let, let, let's not move so much. It's better not to. Okay. Um. 
Is it okay? No. Better? Oh, better now. Okay, good. Fine. Uh, okay, please, please be careful. And then please do not walk here. Um, okay, so that's uh, one remark uh, I just want to make. So the pivots should be independent of the choice of basis. And then last time we talk about uh, the, the Dirac equation, uh, uh, quantization of Dirac field, and then we just get a propagator of the uh, Dirac uh, field. And then today I'm going to uh, talk about uh, the gauge field, spin one. So we did a scalar field, quantization of scalar fields, this is spin zero. And the Dirac field, uh, spin one. And then a gauge field, abelian or electromagnetic field, abelian gauge field. Um, oh, this is oh sorry spin one half spin uh, one okay uh, so that's what we are going to do so but uh, this one is a bit more trickier than the than the, than the other field because of uh abelian is commutative uh, anyway so this part is not written in Pascal Schrader. Uh, so the I just cite the the some book. Uh, so one is the the class uh, book by it's from Tsuba. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't. I always think with someone. Ah, this book. Uh, it's classic book of quantum field theory. Uh, before Pascal, it's uh, it was a standard textbook. And then, if you look at the appendix of this book, it, this kind of uh, like a base change is writ uh, written in that book. So yeah. And also David Tom, uh, Tom's, and also a uh, migrant lecture note. All written. Uh, uh, this kind of stuff. So you can refer if you want. Uh, you can refer to the, this book if you want to study more in detail. Uh, yes. <coughs> so, anyway, so that, that's already cited in my lecture notes. So you can just take a look at the beginning of this section. So, so these are uh, reference for for this section. So let's talk about the uh, the so the so the electromagnetic field as you did in the homework. So the action is given by F mu nu, F mu nu. So F mu nu is given by uh, and then uh, this can be written as the zero one two. E three and minus E one minus E two minus E three zero uh, minus E three E two minus E one equals zero. Um, yeah, E three uh, minus E two minus E one. Okay, so so it's anti-symmetric matrix, and then um. <coughs> Electric uh, electromagnetic field can be written in terms of this uh, gauge field A. And then equation motion, as you did in the homework, so let's just take the integral by parts. What you get is um, this is already you did on homework is equal to zero. Um, And also, there's a beyond identity. I mean, but from from this definition, uh, one can just take the uh, mu rho sigma sorry, is equal to zero. So this is called beyond identity. Identity. 
I take good excellent check that the just plug that one into here. So so you know this mark uh this is a symbol, right? So this oh you don't know, okay. So this symbol means the you just take the anti-symmetric uh, combination at all the anti-symmetric um how does it so that you just permute uh, the C click like. Like this way, so you just take this cyclic permutation, the the, the in the indices. Okay, uh, are you okay? So unfortunately, the blackboard is small, so I'm not gonna write the big flutter, uh, but uh, bear with me. Uh, okay, hopefully recording's okay. Does anybody say something? Maybe it has something to do with the internet connection. Oh, I see. So somehow, internet is not good. I don't know, to be honest. Uh, anyway, so let me move on. Um, uh, this COVID situation is so extreme in China, so unfortunately, this kind of stuff will happen. Uh, so the, this one uh, is different. Okay, first of all, so and then so this so these two equation will give you the uh, Maxwell equation without sources with without J without J with vacuum. Uh, so that's already the, you, you guys did in the homework. And if you look at the solution to the homework, you can just. Uh, Obtain the Maxwell equation that you know. The difference between scalar field and Dirac field uh, lies in follows. For instance, if you look at the Lagrangian, so it doesn't have. So since this is the um, anti-symmetric, so as you can easily see, so this one is the diagonal element is zero. So therefore, this term does not have something like this one. So therefore, A0 does not have time derivative in the Lagrangian. So therefore, it's not, no longer a dynamical field. Okay? So that means the A0. So the, the first difference is A0 is not dynamical. So therefore, so if you uh, define, you cannot define the um, is zero. So the you cannot have the, the canonical conjugate of the A0, you cannot define it uh, canonical um, conjugate of the A0. So therefore you cannot so the when you quantize this is a canonical quantization, you just do always the pair with canonical uh, conjugate momentum and then set the equal to proportional the proportional to that function. We always do this kind of stuff uh, for 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 canonical quantization. Okay? On the other hand, we don't have so we want to impose this kind of canonical uh, commutation relation, but we cannot impose this uh, relation because we don't have pi zero. Okay, so that's first uh, um, difference from scalar and Dirac field, and then so 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 therefore uh, this is first. Uh, Difficulty you encounter, and in particular, uh, you can just see that the uh, let's see. Um, so if you look at the, the Hamiltonian of this system, so Hamiltonian you can just define as the uh, just define the. Uh, um, So then uh, Hamiltonian density is pi i, a i dot minus Lagrangian, uh, Lagrangian will be given by plus, so this is familiar form of the energy of the electrodynamic field, and then we have, this is the, 
Okay, so that's what you obtain uh, once you compute the Hamiltonian, just plug that one into here and just plug on uh, this matrix. Then, so this one is act as Lagrange multiplier. Multiply. Okay, uh, that impose the this Gaussian constraint. So that impose this Lagrange multiplier impose this Gaussian constraint. So therefore, uh, it, it doesn't act as the dynamical field. So that's one way to see uh, the everything determined by 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 um, in fact this uh, so the this has the uh, time and then uh, this is dynamical field and uh, so if you solve this uh, a spatial component a uh, zero is, will be determined. Okay, so that's one difference from oh my goodness. I hate this eraser because it doesn't, okay. It's not good erase. Does anybody say something? Is it better now? I don't know. I hope recording is okay. Okay, so the other uh, difference is there is a so-called gauge of uh, gauge uh, degrees of transformation. So if you do the following, um, transformation, physics doesn't change. So this is called gauge transformation. And as you can easily see, F menu is invariant and uh, uh, so uh, prime mu minus, oh sorry. Even if you do you this one, uh, so from here, this is equal to, as you can easily see, so there's equal because I mean if from here uh, essentially you get that um, so essentially they count them essentially so gauge transformation they count them so now for uh, so there is some extra degrees of freedom uh, you have to kill uh, from the from from physics so the all the configuration, so so this mu and the mu prime over there are physically equivalent indeed. Equivalent. And so therefore you have to be careful about this uh, this redundancy. So therefore, so in fact, A0 is not dynamical. And also by, by, uh, gauge, trans, by gauge transformation, alpha is, has, the ex, uh, how to say, has the redundancy. So therefore, so this A0 plus uh, the gauge transformation kill two degrees of freedom out of four. So A mu has a four component. Will kill so therefore, essentially, uh, the MU has roughly speaking uh, two uh, degrees of freedom physically. So that corresponds to the uh, two polarization of the uh, electromagnetic field. That corresponds to the yeah, two possible polarization of the electromagnetic field. And you have to be careful when you quantize uh, the, the electromagnetic field, a median gauge field, about this gauge transformation, and then um, 
gauge transformation. And so we want to, so therefore we need to fix the gauge. So in other words, if you have the space of mu, space of mu, mu can, that, that's infinite dimensional uh, space, I mean, mu can take the infinite, uh, I mean, just, anyways. But, so there is some, So gauge transform by gauge transformation, mu can just change like this way, okay? But, but they are all physically equivalent. So therefore, once you have to fix the gauge, so you have to pick particular re representative in, in the, the physically equivalent configuration. So therefore, at each po uh, point, you have to fix the gauge. Okay? In, in. So this is gauge fixing. You need to fix a gauge. So this what this uh, how to say? I think uh, you cannot distinguish yellow and the white. I think in the in the tension. But anyway, um, so these are physically equivalent con configuration, but you have to pick particular one, and that's called gauge fixing. And we want to do the gauge fixing in Lorentz invariant manner, and so therefore we just write uh, take this kind of form. So this is called Lorentz gauge. Somehow this Lorentz is there are no t. Uh, I think different from Lorentz transformation, Lorentz gauge. So we want to impose this condition. Then one can fix the gauge. So one can just so you have to particularly choose alpha in such a way that the this condition is satisfied. That's called Lorentz gauge. Um, okay, so that's uh, 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 we're going to impose this Lorentz gauge. So as you can easily see, this is a part of Lorentz invariant, right? So manifestly Lorentz invariant. I mean, there's other gauge like a Coulomb gauge and so on. Th those are not the uh, Lorentz invariant, so it's not so convenient. I mean, you one can pick whatever gauge that's physically equivalent, but we want to find uh, suitable one. We want to use suitable, and I hate this relation it's so annoying. Oh my goodness. Yes. This remind me reminds me the eraser at the US. So that's not as bad as the US. Okay, anyway, so the so the, the so we're going to quantize the, the this gauge field, but the, the naive so let let me show you the why not naive gauge. Uh, quantization doesn't work because I, as I mentioned this pi zero it's so pi zero is uh, you cannot de define pi zero so that you cannot impose canonical computation relations that's one reason another reason is that the as you know so the, all the Feynman propagator should be the uh, green function of the equation of motion okay and then so the propagator Feynman propagator in gauge field which should be Define it like this way. And the equation motion I already erased, sorry, is in fact uh, given by as follows. So the equation motion for, for, for gauge field is something like a. a <laughs> So equation motion is something like this. So therefore, um, so therefore, uh, this uh, this green function should obey. We we expect um, 
acts on G uh, new row X minus Y should give you the proportion of the delta function. I times delta mu rho uh, delta function to be uh, no, oh, sorry. So delta function, we expect this expect, we expect. So this the um, propagator, Fama propagator gauge field should obey this kind of property we expect. And if you go to the moment of space, this can be written as follows, minus g mu nu, um, like this way. And if you go to moment on space, so if you go to the moment on space, uh, it can be written like this. So you just replace the partial mu to IP. That's going to the moment of space. And it just get rid of the delta function. Okay, uh, then as you can easily see, uh, I think maybe plus minus, oh, okay. So uh, I'm, I'm not careful about sign. Plus, I, I should write down plus minus. I don't know which one's correct. Um, Yep. Ah, so then you can easily see that this is not invariable matrix. So you cannot in mark with a matrix in that and then define D tilde as a as a so you just usually as you know propagator in Dirk and the crank on scalar propagator is something like a, a and this is scalar field, and this field is something like this. Okay. So, so this, this guy is just a num number, and this is matrix, but this is invariable, invariable. Because, I mean, we know that the p slash m, p slash minus m is just a p square plus m square. Is it okay? Uh, sorry, minus, minus, sorry. So now, so now for, so these these are the, the invariable matrix. But you, as you can see, so how, how to say this is not invariable matrix? So you, as you can easily see, uh, so if you multiply, so this matrix is the matrix four by four matrix, which is indexed by mu and nu. And if you multiply, for instance, p nu on here. You get the minus p uh, mu p square plus p mu uh, p square is equal to zero. So therefore, this is new vector. Okay, new vector. So therefore, it's not it. Uh, the eigenvalue is zero. It, I, I, one of the eigenvalue of this matrix should be zero because it has a new uh, new vector. So matrix some, some matrix multiplied vector you get zero, which means it's not invariable. So therefore you cannot bring down to here in denominator. Okay. So therefore that this is one of the problem. The 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 naive quantization doesn't work. So this is one of the in, uh, how to say indication that the naive quantization gauge field doesn't work. So therefore you have to be careful about when you quantize. When you quantize the um, the gauge field, so so we want to quantize the um, the gauge field by imposing Lorentz gauge. So first of all, so we. We want to do the following. So this max off So so this is the uh, so this is like a multiplier.
Lagrange multiplier, and then we impose the this Lorentz gauge by by adding Lagrange multiplier C. Then, so if you do the, uh, the equation motion, becomes something like this. So when uh, C goes to infinity, it becomes or original Lagrangian. It, so that, therefore, C goes to infinity, um, it, it becomes the, the original equation motion. Okay. Um, so so this is equivalent only up uh, the the original equation motion. When you impose the Lorentz gauge, okay. and then so C can be take any value. So uh, C is any value uh, can take any value. And it, when you set C equal to one, it's called the Feynman gauge. And if you set C equal to, uh, I mean, you have to be, be careful when you set C equal to zero. This is called Landau gauge. And in this lecture, we pick this one, and also uh, Pat can show the pick uh, the Feynman gauge. Uh, because I mean, when you set C equal to one, everything becomes particularly simple. When you set C equal to one, this is becomes zero, right? So therefore, it becomes just a crank order equation, massless crank order equation, and you should have a four component of that. Therefore, we we pick the. Um, Particularly simpler one. Um, in particular, so when you set um, so this, when you said C equal to one, uh, by doing the internal of parts and so on, one can set the Lagrangian of C equal to one is equivalent. Integral of parts is very simple. It becomes like this. So it becomes very particular simple. So if you solve this, uh, uh, like from, try to get the the, the Euler Lagrange equation. You get the, this this guy, right? This guy equal to zero. That's you can easily see. And then I already forgot the. Uh, I did this exercise when I write direction note, but I already forgot. It's a long time ago, like three weeks ago. Uh, you have to do the integral parts. I forgot how to do that. Let's see. Uh, maybe I can do it this way for you. Um, so this guy, and then um, maybe it's better not to do. <laughs> maybe I, I may make a mistake. How oh, did I do that? I forgot to one, two, three, so, um, so you have to do the integral parts minus one fourth. Uh, I think you have to do the integral parts from here, and you get the. Uh, anyway, so it's better not to do it now. I think I think I'll make a mistake. Anyway, so you can do that. Uh, it's good exercise for you to do that. It's better not to do it now. I think it, I, I will waste your time. Um, so if you do that, what's nice is that the canonical conjugate momentum is easily derived. So
So now there is no uh, F menu, so therefore one can define as follows. So canonical conjugate momentum can be easily defined. And then, so therefore, uh, we can just impose the um, the canonical computational relation like this way. And in the Like this way, so. Does anybody say something? No. Good. So you can impose a uh, canonical uh, computational relation uh, you, in usual manner. And also other commute. And since we have the equation motion is particularly simple and is equal to one, we just have a, a klein golden equation, massless klein golden equation. So therefore, it's very simple to do the um, uh, model expansion because it's, we just need to follow the scalar field. It's the same thing uh, as scalar field. But we just have polarization vector because here we have a four component vector. So therefore, uh, we can just do the uh, usual manner. Uh, you do the following the um, the mode expansion here you have to be careful about uh, the polarization vector uh, in your lambda uh, p So this this is called polarization vector, and and then we do the same thing. And then. Like this way. Okay. So we do the for uh, the mode expansion, and we want to treat this guy, this guy mode, as operator as usual. Okay. As usual. So. Okay. So. So in fact. So this guy is called polarization vector. Of the gauge field, and then uh, we can just have the uh, let's see, I'm not sure. So suppose the the gauge field is uh, of course it's massless. So therefore, uh, the momentum you can just take e zero zero e. So therefore, it it, it should be light like light like vector because it's massless. Um. So now for p square equal to zero, as we can see from here, from this equation motion. And then, so we just have a mu zero, uh, lambda equal to zero. So this is called time-like uh, vector, uh, time-like polarization. So this is called time-like. And then, uh, then lambda equal to one uh, mu, is equal to uh, 0, 1, 0, 0. E lambda equal to 2 mu is 0, 0, 1, 0. And then E mu lambda equal to 3, like this. And this is called, uh, let's see.
I'm like. And this is called on uh, transfers. And this is called uh, longitude. That's, um, so when the, 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 the momentum takes the, the, the this one, E is zero, zero, E. But if you, you can just define the, this, the time like and then, then transfer some longitude out vector for arbitrary momentum, uh, arbitrary light like momentum, but I'm, I'm going to omit. I'm going to, you, you can just uh, think about it, how to define like a Lorentz invariant matter. But I think that's, I mean, that's not so illuminating at this moment. And this polarization vector will satisfy the following condition E mu lambda dot E mu lambda prime uh, G mu nu is equal to G lambda lambda prime. And likewise, uh, E lambda mu This satisfies this condition. Now, so we can do the, the same exercise, the klein gordon case, uh, by, by using this relation. So just plug, extract, using this relation, extract the, the, uh, the A and the creation and addition operator. Then one can get and do the inverse Fourier transformation one can get from this canonical commutation relation, canonical commutation relation imply, you already did lots of exercise for, for in homework, and as you can really imagine, you get this kind of relation, equal to minus g lambda lambda prime, two pi q lambda q minus q. So uh, this is good exercise. I mean, you just do that. I mean, you already did many exercise in similar kind. Uh, so just do that <laughs> inverse Fourier transformation to get this direction. I'm not gonna do that because it's not illuminating. Really. And be careful about, so the here you have a minus sign. And if you look at the uh, lambda equal to zero and lambda prime equal to zero, you, you get the something very, very strange. Minus two pi q. So that look, it has. So we want to treat uh, this guy as a creation and an annihilation, creation and annihilation operator as usual. Okay. However, if you do that. So if you so we want to we want to interpret this one create one photon one photon with polarization vector lambda equal to zero we want to interpret like this way and we just take the inner product what you get is minus sign of two pi of q the outer This means that the, if you define the state which is created by this operator, this has negative norm. So, which is very strange in terms of uh, uh, this, uh, in terms of physics, the Hilbert space should be positive definite. Um, uh, so therefore, uh, so this is very, very strange. So therefore, so you can just 
if you do impose the the uh, Lorentz gauge and then um, Lorentz gauge and then do the na naive canonical quantization, we encounter negative norm, which means that the, we didn't get rid of enough physical degrees of freedom. So, as we know uh, in, from electrodynamics, uh, so the photon should have only two polarization. Okay, so, so two polarization and it's uh, some Maybe already know that the so the in physical it only transfers will, will present. That's uh, the when you learn electromagnetism. So only two polarization, which is transverse uh, polarization, will present. That we know. So therefore, um, this means that the uh, even if you put the uh, Lagrangian multiplier in the Lagrangian and they do the chemical quantization, we didn't get enough uh, physical degrees. Uh, there's still redundancy. That's what it means. So to get rid of this uh, physical redundancy, we just impo uh, impose so-called uh, um, Lupita and then Brula quantization condition. Condition. This is closely related. To, so in QFT two, I'm not sure you guys just uh, take the QFT two, but this is very closely related for the pop off uh, gauge fixing uh, quantization condition uh, quantization or oh, gauge fixing. Uh, In, uh, so this is the for for quantization. So when you do the quantization, yam field. <laughs> so here, sorry, I don't know why I, I use that black board. But anyway, um, thanks, thanks. <laughs> so in, so what we are going to learn, so bit, so abelian. So yam is is non non abelian, which means that the here, F mu nu take the matrix value 0, 1, F mu nu, sorry, 1, 1, 1, 2, F mu nu, 2, 1, F mu nu, uh, 2, 2, like this way. And if it satisfies some condition, and we just write down this is F mu. So we write down like this way. Maybe sometimes people write the A or something. And so it becomes matrix value. And then Yamil's is F mu nu, is become F mu nu. And this is already matrix, so therefore you take trace of this one to make a gauging brand. And then you have, so this is called the Yamil's Lagrangian. So that's the, so since it's matrix value, it's no longer committed. You understand? So it, in matrix A, B is not equal to B, A, right? That's why it's called non abelian. But here you have just a, uh, it's some, it's not, it's not matrix. So, so this is the amel. So when you, so quantize this F menu, uh, this, uh, you need to use for pop of gauge field. But, but, but that's uh, the, the, the topic of the, the um, uh, QFT2. But anyway, so that is very closely related to this. So to remove the redundancy of the, the, the spectrum here in space, so this kind of stuff is physically uh, physically ill-defined space. To remove this physical, so we impose this, uh, so this classically we impose Lorentz gauge like this, but quantum mechanically we impose this uh, condition. So S prime this, um, any states, physical state should obey this relation. 
So now we treat a mu as an operator. Operator acts on human space of the uh, of and any physical state should satisfy this condition. So S pis and then S prime pis any are any physical state. Physical well defined physically. Well defined state. Well defined state. So this is the um, physical well defined state in Hebrew space. This this is not Hamiltonian Hebrew space. Okay. This is not Hamiltonian, be careful. Uh maybe I should. Good. Uh, I'm very lucky to be here. So I still keep this guy. So this is the uh, this is Gupta Blula quantization condition for Hilbert space. So quantum mechanically, so this Lorentz gauge is uplift to the, this uh, GV quantization condition. In, that impose some condition in human space, and then we imp we define this guy is a plus, and this guy is a minus. A, is it okay? Or is it okay? A minus. Okay. Good. Oh, I'm sorry. I think. I think there's a typo in my lecture note. Huh? I think there's a typo. I think this should be plus and this should be minus, I think. Yeah. Sorry. Creation operator. So there's a typo in my lecture note. Creation operator should be, uh, let me check. Uh, there's a typo in my lecture note. Sorry. There must be oh, is it okay? Because annihilation operate. Yeah, yeah, sorry. There's a typo. Uh, yeah, so there's a typo in my, so this one, this, this quantization condition is equivalent to, this is equivalent to imposing a uh, partial mu a plus. So we decompose a mu is a plus of x A minus, sorry, there's a typo in my lecture note. And this is the creation operator. And this is annihilation. Therefore, this quantization condition is something like this one. Uh, minus acts on S this. And then S is prime. S is the uh, annihilation operator naturally annihilates Hilbert space, but the, the, the condition is this guy. So therefore, uh, I think uh, mu and the mu, uh, sorry, maybe I think I should write down like this way. So uh, annihilation operator automatically annihilates this. So therefore, the, 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 what's left is this guy. So the important thing is that the this one is equivalent. I hate this. So, this is equivalent to condition that the any physical state should satisfy this one. Even though this is an annihilation operator, ah, so a creation operator acts on physical Hilbert space, should satisfy this condition. Okay. So therefore, there's a typo in my lecture note. So I my in my in my lecture note plus and minus definition is opposite. So, but that it's typo. Uh, so,
So this, so the, so now for GB quantization condition is either this one or this one. It's equivalent. So as you can easily see, uh, yeah. So if if this annihilates, so this one annihilates this guy. Okay. So if you take the the um, how to say permission conjugate of this uh, operator is equivalent to partial mu a mu minus of x permission conjugate s plus prime equal to zero. Okay. So therefore, this condition is satisfied. Okay, to see the consequence of the um, consequence of this GB quantization condition, so we just look at the state which I define. Well, so we define define a one particle state in momentum space with polarization vector. Is uh, square to E. Uh, can you see that? I hope you can see it. So this is this is momentum. This is polarization vector. Vector. And this polarization C is related to this alpha lambda. Alpha lambda is just constant. I will tell you what's uh, it's not C, zeta, sorry. Zeta? Yeah, because C is used for like I come up like yeah. So therefore C is indeed given by the following um uh, lambda alpha lambda uh So you just take alpha lambda, it's just a linear, so our alpha is just constant, and this zeta is a linear combination of polarization vector. That's what it means. Okay. So alpha determines uh, zeta. It's just a linear combination. Just constant. Okay. Okay. Then, so let's see the consequence of this quantization condition. Consider that you just act on this state of this operator. So we now treat this one. So in quantum mechanically, this field is operator. So acts on this state, B zeta. And what's going to happen is that the, uh, we just plug this guy into here. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Huh? I completely. I'm so sorry. It, it was okay. Ah, uh, sorry. Ah, uh, sorry. Election is okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not okay. <laughs> Election is okay. Sorry. This is annihilation is okay. Sorry. And this is creation. I'm sorry, so stupid. And this is A plus. <sighs> no. Yeah, because it's a uh, all of the physics. Yeah. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, I just make you confused. The election is okay. So the annihilation operator is the A plus and the creation operator is A minus. But if you satisfy this condition, if you satisfy this condition, 
these conditions automatically satisfy. Okay, sorry. So now for so here you have annihilation operator. I'm very sorry, my brain's not working. Uh, lambda uh, q. Uh, maybe I should write down here. I'm So sorry. Okay, good. So <laughs> I'm very sorry about the confusion. So lecture note is okay. <laughs> so here, uh, scarlet EP appear here. So this part, so this red part, is indeed this guy. Okay, and then uh, this derivative. So this derivative will create this guy. Okay, and uh, the rest is the same as here. Rest is same as here. I'm so sorry about uh, my mind on confusion. Okay, now we impose, the, so the, we just do the uh, computation between A and the A dagger, and what's get, what, what we get, so this part is at the minus 2 pi of Q, um, sum of uh, gamma, uh, Okay. Or maybe alpha lambda um, and delta three p minus q by 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 um, commutation relations by 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 from here from here. Uh, by the way, so so it's a boson, so it's a commutation relation instead of anti commutation relation. Okay. okay, so that's what we get, and just do the integral of q, and what we get is the Oh, sorry, it's a big mistake. I told you wrong. And this is equal to i times p dot c into v minus i p dot x is zero. And if we want to impose this is equal to zero, which means that this is p dot c equal to zero. Oxy, so is that so now for um here based space of physics state P dot C is inside a, a physical space. Space means that the if or not only if this condition satisfies. So this is what the, this is GB quantization condition tell us. Okay. So essentially, uh, so this will kill so that so our concern is that the a zero lambda a lambda equal to zero um, mu acts on zero has a negative null. So we had we saw that this has negative null. Um, but if you look at the if you take the uh, if p is equal to e zero zero e, and then if the uh, out so to 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 create this state we we need to pick that the this alpha should be equal to alpha, how to say, it, lambda equal to zero is one, and the other is alpha lambda equal to i should be zero, okay? That is the time-like polarization you get. So as you can see, to create the time-like polarization, you should set alpha lambda equal to zero should be non-trivial, the other should be trivial. Then, uh, if you multiply the p dot uh, this polarization vector 
So P dot P lambda equal to zero polarization vector, this is equal to E, right? Which is non-zero. You just pick only this one, this guy. Okay. You understand? Are you guys following? <laughs> This is P mu and P mu. Okay, and this guy is the E zero zero E and this guy is the one zero zero zero. So now for this is equal to E, right? Okay. So therefore this is not satisfy this condition. Okay. Therefore this is not not inside the physical space. Therefore, we can kill the, the, the negative null state. So, no, no need to worry about it. No worry about our negative null. Okay. However, so the, there's something you need to be worry about. You have to be. So therefore, to have the physical polarization, um, uh, physical polarization, we have this kind of decomposition, where C mu t is equal to zero something something. No, C, sorry, that. Like this way. So, as you can easily see, if E0, 0, zero is E, if you contract with this guy, automatically zero, right? So, this guy contract with this one, automatically zero. Okay? However, this one, so if you multiply this one times this one, E minus E, because the special. Special inner product, you get the minus sign, E minus C. E. So therefore, this one is also okay. So therefore, and this T stands for our transverse, as you can easily see. And I call this S is the uh, spurious, spurious. That stands for spurious. So I'll see the form in this. So, so first of all, also if you consider this state, is essentially you create the state like a p lambda equal to zero minus a p lambda equal to three dagger acts on um, And in fact, this is the this is the uh, zero norm state. As you can see, C S dot C S is uh, not C, sorry, zeta S and the zeta S. What would you get if you take inner product this one? If you take inner product this one, what, what would you get? Zero, because I mean we take the it's proportional to this. Okay, so it's it's right like it's right like it's proportional to this uh, the photon. Uh, no, how to say the photon uh, momentum. Okay, momentum vector. So therefore, it's just proportional to moment like like momentum vector. So therefore, the inner product is zero. But therefore, if you take the um, so this is zero. So therefore, P zeta s, P zeta s should be equal to zero.
So therefore, if you include these states, if you just include the state, these states, in fact, the Hilbert space is not a positive de definite. It's po po semi-definite. Mm -hmm. So positive definite means that the uh, if you have the Hilbert space, positive definite means the um, positive definite means alpha alpha equal to uh, and the equality form. Only you. Um, is here. So this is what what the uh, it's just a uh, the the state is trivial. So the only equality holds the state is trivial. But here it's non-trivial state, but uh, equality is satisfied. So therefore, it's no longer positive definite. So this is the definition of positive definite. So not positive definite. So even though you have non-trivial state, um, however, so this uh, this spur state has something uh, weird. So this spirit state has something very strange that can be seen from just taking a look at the energy of this, this guy. So let's look at the energy of this guy. To do that, then we, we need to look at the Hamiltonian of this system. Hamiltonian is given by uh, d cube x pi nu. And this is equal to uh, sorry. So this is the Hamiltonian of this system. So recall that the, here we impose the x equal to one, in fact, gauge with Lagrange c equal to one. So this is the Lagrangian uh, Feynman gauge. And we know that this is equal to minus equal to, this is equal to minus a dot mu x, and this is equal to So therefore, you can easily see this is the case. Now we plug this uh, uh, model expansion into here, and what we get, and then do the Fourier transformation. Uh, what we get is this guy. As you can easily see, I mean, you can as you can easily imagine. So this is equal to a p. Factor, and and of course, there is some infinity we show up, but so therefore, uh, normal order, normal order one, normal order constant is uh, just ignored. Sorry. Ah, uh, sorry. This is the momentum, or, or or you just write down this is EP. Okay, sorry. Maybe I should write. 
So if you plug that the model expansion here and then do the free integral, you will get this one. So now we just and so as you can see, this can be understood as minus. Uh, sorry. EP. It becomes like this. So be careful with this negative sign and here special GII equal to minus one. Okay. So therefore, uh, if you take the contract, you get the minus sign and the minus can sign cancel in special component, you get a plus sign. And if, on the other hand, time component here, you get a plus sign, so you get the minus sign because of this guy. Okay, so then if you sandwich by by so the energy of the states can be just obtained by sandwiching oh. so this energy of states uh, can uh, so e can be obtained of this uh, uh, p and z state can be obtained by just sandwiching sorry h If you take sandwiching by but this one, so you can easily see So since this state is just created by this zero and the three component, okay? Therefore, if you sandwich by uh, the zero and three comp component, so uh, it's a uh, it's, it's just a, a three, a zero minus a lab. So H is so what what's going to happen is that the so. A3 component, if you commute this one, so only the i equals 3 component it will matter. On the other hand, um, A0 component, this only matters. Okay? And the computation ratio always gives you delta function with the same sign. Okay? So therefore, this, this three, 3 component will cancel with a, a 0 component with minus sign. So therefore, this should be equal to 0. Do you see that? Is it okay? Now, so computation ratio for uh, so computation ratio of lambda. is equal to minus g lambda lambda prime 2 pi q delta e minus q. If you use this one, so yeah, as you can easily see, if you use this one, uh, you just need to commute a, a to, like a, how to say, the twice to get the two delta function, three, this guy and this guy. And then this guy also, uh, you have to commute like a, twice and then you get the uh, the tw two of this guy two times this guy and then minus sign and cancel they cancel with minus so therefore energy is zero so here so therefore this the reason why i call spurious means that this spurious means it's just a, it's like a ghost so even if it, you act the creation operator to vacuum so it looks like we create some uh, one particle state, but energy is equal to zero. It doesn't contribute any energy. Okay, 
even though it looks like it has a momentum p. So therefore, it has e0,0 e component. So therefore, this is called, uh, what's, that's why I call it spurious. And in fact, all the operator acts on this p dot zeta s p dot zeta s this is indeed zero so it decouple from physical process so that's why everything any operator all acts on this p so it decouple from the physical process so therefore it's a uh, so you can ignore uh, this uh, state so therefore, what's relevant in physically is this transverse component. So this guy decouple from physical process. Physical process. And this guy transverse polarization, these two trans polarization is physical one, as we expect. Okay, so let's take a break. Let's take a 10 minutes break. And if you want to submit the homework, just submit the in front. No, 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 to degree of freedom means to polarization, not plus. We need to, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so here is, so mu can take, mu of f, the space of mu of x is the, I mean, infinite dimensional, but the gaze, by gaze transformation, this, like space of mu, and this this is particular uh, configuration. This point. once you pick a point, means the some particular configuration. And if you add uh, this gauge transformation alpha, it just change the configuration a little bit. So that so that if you if you vary alpha, it just vary like this, very all gauge alpha. Yeah, uh, just choice of alpha. And then you have to pick a particular representation to 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 do the gauge fix. Two different rights physical inequivalent uh configuration. In equivalent. In not physically not equivalent. These these how to say uh vertical I say it's not vertical curve, vertical curve. Is physically inequivalent. So, because they are related by gauge transformation, but they are not related by gauge transformation. They are not related by gauge transformation. And you have to pick particular representative in this uh, uh, physically equivalent the configuration. That's the uh, schematic diagram I have drawn. Uh, we choose the different alpha in different gauges. But, um, but if we choose this point as, a, as alpha one and a different alpha two, no, 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 alpha two. It's alpha two. If you pick the alpha one, it picks alpha. Every all the point here is alpha one. Do you understand? Some particular alpha. So
So when when you set a mu lambda equal to zero, equal to one zero zero zero. So means they say mu equal to zero, mu equal to one, mu equal to two, and mu equal to three. Yes. Okay. 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 Well, what's why your question? Is, why is it how four components? Because a mu of x is has a component, right? It's mu equal to zero. X a one of x, a two of x, and three of x. I mean, is it have a relation between the two degrees of freedom? So it, it has a four degrees of freedom first, but it, so since it it has negative norm, so it, it kills. And then also this is first one, so this time a zero equal to a three, it's it, it decouple. Yeah. Huh? Negative norm. So we know that the a lambda zero acts on this one will give you a negative norm, right? So that is stands for some gauge field. That is corresponding to gauge field that only has time component. But this one it has a negative norm. But if you impose this GB quantization condition, this will be eliminated. So the AMU has a full component. So So this is massless triangle equation. And we know that the after Feynman gauge, this is the uh, the, the equation motion. And the mu can take zero one. So therefore, so so first you have a four component. And but if you only create a zero, only create a zero, it it, it doesn't obey GB quantization condition. This is no no longer zero. So therefore, it's not physical state. And if a zero equal to a three, it becomes spurious uh, polarization vector. If you take the 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 any operator becomes zero. So therefore. A0 equal to A3 degree of freedom. This is also not physical. So what's left is A1 and A2. That's transverse of polarization. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. After gauge field. That's what I mean. Okay. So then for the question at the beginning of the class, you mentioned that um, uh, we, we try to quantize the 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 A the the vector field of the A and uh, we call that the, the matrix the uh the zero determinant. It, it, yes. Yes, but uh, um, uh, you think about it, in in another case uh, the the beta is a uh, is square minus omega. Yes. Uh, it has the non zero. But in the but the uh, what is non zero? T square. Uh, for example, at the so I mean, if you satisfy the equation motion, this is zero. But we don't impose the equation motion. No, no, because I mean, permission country. Oh, we only care about the like, A plus. Yeah. 
equal to zero means that the S is prime smaller than the zero. So therefore, at the end of the day, so we have this kind of condition. <laughs> But why we don't care about that? In the case that that actually we are after all, you know, after all, critical stage, because we do it. Why don't we don't care about this case? But that's too much. That's too much. Uh, what's the meaning of too much? Because here it's a, it's a creation operator, right? Creation operator acts on this one equal to zero means that the uh it's not it, it doesn't give you right to, uh right physical condition oh. so the, the reason why the reason why we get the p dot over there i already hear it the reason why p dot zeta equal to zero means that we just compute this a and a dagger acts on vacuum and we just commute and a p and a q and right. so the AQ really comes from F, this oh, plus sign. Okay. If you, but if you put the plus sign, so the, okay. it's too much. It's like drug here. It's, it's, it's like, like what we're doing, a drug field for the familiar. Okay. Huh? okay. The, the if it becomes per, 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 like, If you impose this, this one equal to zero, I mean, it's uh, yeah. too much. I mean, so it becomes uh, that you have to impose the anti computational ratio. Right, right. So, spin to static theorem right, right, right. will we'll be biologized. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe I missed something. Oh, yeah. So, so the polarization vector is sum of A uh, alpha lambda. And then a dagger, uh, a lambda dagger, dagger and zero. This is I call it uh, B, like this thing, right? This thing, right? And I pick. I pick alpha as the alpha polarization vector is one zero zero one. And I come for uh. And then if you take the inner product, it should be minus or negative. Oh, so I think maybe I should write down lambda. Oh, sorry, I think that's sum of t lambda uh, from lambda. And the alpha lambda, oh, okay, okay. Should be like this way. Okay. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. This one is physical. But not first. But this one is P dot Z. Yes. But if this one satisfies the inner product is zero, but this one. Both satisfy p dot c, uh, zeta equal to zero. Both but satisfy. But this one is not. Yeah, it make up for any physical system. Both, both p dot zeta equal to zero, both p and s. You can you, you can see p zero to zero. And if you take the inner product, the whole whole is zero. But uh, if this one satisfies this, just yeah. But the the spurious one, in fact, the decouple uh, like any physical process. For instance, if you take the inner product with H, it becomes zero. Right? Yes. So I already showed it. But any operator acts on this. Uh, if you sandwich the any operator, it always be zero. So it seems one. to be a physical state, but uh, there is no energy and. Yeah, so it, it doesn't affect any physics process.
about the degree, uh, the, uh, the degree of the freedom. Okay, uh, in the, in the, um, finally we find that there is only two degree of freedom in the basic state, mm -hmm. right? In that uh, the one there is two sides, right? Mm -hmm. this is. And uh, mm -hmm. um, for our four vector, we have four degree of freedom. And uh, uh, we, how about, um, how we cancel the two degree of freedom? Uh, uh, I will tell the two degree of freedom for four vectors. And finally, we get a, a two degree of freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, I think we, we, when we choose the Roland gauge, mm -hmm. we kill a freedom, right? Yeah. And uh, once we impose this condition, we got say if we zero, we kill another freedom. Yeah. And then in the end, we have. Uh, to the degree of freedom. No, no, so this one QS, you know. <laughs> but, 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 but there is a zeta S, but zeta S decoupled from physical process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, so this has three degree of freedom. Yeah. Oh, and then we find that, oh, this one is zero. And, uh, and, uh, and, and what's left is three degrees of freedom, but 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 that one spurious will decouple. It doesn't affect any physical process. Oh, okay. That's so right. This is something uh, that we can check out. Yeah. Okay, more question. Okay, there's a level question. Is, it, is this a typo? Yeah, it's typo. Okay. It's a, it's a alpha point. Lambda point. So There's a lot of typo in my lecture note, sorry. Uh, okay. Shall we resume? Okay, shall we resume? Okay, so is there a question from the from Tencent side? Let me, uh, if you have a question, just unmute yourself and ask question now. From Students in Tencent side is okay. 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 So let's briefly uh, summarize what I, what we have. So there are lots of confusion from people. So. Can you bring a new eraser from the next room? Like See, yeah, it's already super dirty. Okay, let's recap. 
So, so A mu of x has a four component. And then, uh, so when you quantize it, uh, so you can have dp two pi cube uh, squared one over squared two ep sum over lambda e lambda mu of uh, p a p um, e to the i p x plus e to the p dagger lambda lambda uh, e to the i dx. Then this four component is how to say represented by by this polarization vector, and then uh, so uh, GB quantization condition. Condition in kill it has to be equal to zero. This means that the so time like one only e lambda equal to zero or mu equal to so then that will kill a p lambda equal to zero acts on vacuum. So this state has the uh, the p and a lambda equal to zero state. It's not included, included uh, Hilbert space. Because if you do that, if you do that p dot uh, zeta is no longer zero. Okay? Therefore, it's not the um, physical state, there's no, okay, thanks. Then, uh, What's left? So this this will kill the A0 component essentially. But it means the, the component. So if you have the the operator only have an A0, that will that will satis that is not satisfied with the GB quantization condition, so that the, it's no longer a physical state. And then uh, what's left is three physical degrees of freedom and So this is the zeta. Zeta has the uh, three physical degrees of freedom. However, that you can decompose, transport one, the first and second component, and then, uh, in fact, the, the third component. But uh, I mean, to to satisfy this condition, to satisfy this condition, ah, uh, sorry, this condition, GB condition, quantization condition. You should have the both uh, time and then, then the space condition, and it becomes light like. It pro it, it's proportional to the, uh, the 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 momentum of the momentum p mu of the photon. It should be proportional to the momentum photon. So therefore, inner product is zero. It's equal, because it's light like. Okay, p square equal to zero. However, this Physical degrees of freedom, for instance, if you have only a zero and a three, a zero and a three, then that is the all the operator. So, for instance, energy equal to zero, and all the operator. Uh, if you sandwich this state, this spirit state, you get zero. So, therefore, it does not affect any operator. Cannot see these states, these spirit states, uh, these states. So therefore, what's left is the only state is this 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 guy, this polarization transverse one. That's the recap of the the, the first first lectures. Okay. Okay. And it's super easy. Uh, then let's determine. The Feynman propagator. So free theory, the goal is the, to determine the Hilbert space and then um, Feynman propagator.
Sorry, I already erased what I have written just now. Okay, let's continue. So next, we our job is to determine final propagator, but my feature is super easy. So when c is equal to one, this Feynman gauge, so the equation of motion becomes like this way. Right? So, so therefore, what we expect is that the uh, the propagator, uh, so as I mentioned, the propagator I call it the mu of x minus y is defined as the time again time ordered two point function. Um, you can do this. I mean, you can just do the same thing as before, or like we can do the, 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 the some cheating. So cheating is that the uh, so we expect this guy uh, will satisfy the the uh, the green function. So therefore, so this is g mu nu acts on Persian square d uh, new row of x minus y. So we expect this will give you the the the, the um, g. I'm oh, sorry, delta. Delta cube. Uh, no, no, fourth x minus y. Okay. Uh, okay. So then, so therefore, uh, what we have is that the the following. The, uh, if you go to the moment of space, what we have is that the um, g mu nu d square uh, d tilde uh, new row and p is equal to unfortunately something is wrong uh, i times delta uh, new row. Okay. Now we know this is invertible. Okay. So more precisely, this one can be uh, written as follows: uh, p square d tilde uh, new uh, mu nu. Sorry, new mu is e uh, sorry. Well, what I'm doing? Oh, sorry, mu rho. Mu rho is equal to i delta mu rho. Right? I delta mu rho. Sorry, over p. So that for this, this can be understood as p square p tilde <laughs> uh, mu rho is p is equal to i g mu rho, and then d tilde mu rho p is just that i times g mu rho and p square, and this is final problem. <laughs> and then. If you're honest enough, and if you go to the the the, the, the um, corner space, you get to just plug this one into here, two pi to the uh, fourth and p square uh, over i times g mu rho and e to the i uh, p x minus y, and I need to be careful about the sign of the exponent, and then I think there's a minus sign here. So this is kind of cheating, so by just assuming this, the Feynman propagator should be the green function, should be the green function of the, of the, 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 the equation motion. Do, do, do you understand what I'm doing here? <laughs> Is it okay? So, uh, okay. Uh, sorry, I, I think I think there's a one typo. So there, there's a minus sign. So minus sign, sorry. And here there's a minus sign. And then the minus sign. 
And then, so if you're very, very honest enough, one can do the following. So this is kind of cheating, but uh, there's another way to derive So, uh, and then you want us to plug into this uh, the Fourier mode, and then what you end up with the, the I think I should go to the uh, uh, lecture. Oh, sorry, there's some. Uh, so it's very same as the Crying Gordon case, but uh, there's some. Uh, I need, I didn't print out the Crying Gordon case, so so that essentially what we have is that the uh, this is equal to. Oh yeah. Yeah. So essentially, what we have is that the, this is equal to theta. Uh, x0 minus y0 and then uh, dp to p to pi. I mean, you just you have to do the same, repeat the same exercise as before. Uh, and then here you have a g menu and to ep. So this g menu come from polarization vector. So recall that the if you have the polarization vector lambda mu lambda uh, extra nu lambda prime g lambda lambda prime. This is equal to g mu. And then p to the i, oh, I forgot, uh, p x minus y minus sign and p zero equal to e p. You already did this kind of exercise a lot on the homework and say the y naught minus x naught and then d cube P to pi cube g mu nu uh, to e p and the e to the i p dot x minus y and the p zero is equal to e p and then uh, one has to make it a Lorentz in uh, invariant Lorentz invariant way. Uh, sorry, I think. Uh... I have to be careful. I'll be careful about the science on. Uh, just a moment. <laughs> okay, so there's some uh, sign issue with minus. So there's a minus sign. Uh, so there's some sign issue. And then, okay, we do the same thing. So here. <laughs> we are uh, so essentially essentially d e p e to the minus plus minus i p dot x minus y can be obtained by this integral. I mean, we did many times, this, uh, already two times. This kind of integral, uh, and here, second term, again, you have to do this kind of transformation, minus p, and p goes to minus p, and then, uh, so to, to, to get the, the correct propagator, uh, so for the first time, you have to cross the the, the bottom and the second time you have to cross uh, upper half plane and then uh, sorry uh, what I'm doing here. so this is dp0 uh, dp0 sorry dp0 2 pi uh, what was that dp0 2 pi i times e squared minus m squared, oh, not m squared, sorry, uh, p squared. 
And now it's a bit, bit, bit you have to be careful that but there's no M square here. So the apple uh here but but it's okay. Uh because so, the equation motion is just a zero massless p square, but now here you have a plus i epsilon. Uh, uh epsilon and the e to the minus i p dot uh, x minus y. And here i plus i if you don't use plus i plus e, epsilon prescription, so the contour is this guy. Contour is this guy. Okay. Contour is this guy. And then if you want to use the plus e, uh, epsilon prescription, so you have the you just move uh, the pole by plus i epsilon. Okay. And put inside of here, and what you get is this guy. Okay. So that's what you get. Do, do you understand? So, plug this one into here and it, do the manipulation I did three times. Uh, Two times in the before, what you get is this guy. Okay, and that's what you get. So this is Feynman propagator. Okay. So now, so this is the case of c equal to one for generic c. So equation motion. So just we just recall the equation motion of the generic C, the generic C equation motion is something like this one. Um, Okay, so this is the equation motion, okay? So therefore, we did the same trick. Okay, and this will give you Okay, this guy. And then what you end up with the uh the tilde. So you, you need to find an inverse matrix of this guy, uh, which can be easily done. <sighs> which can be easily done by the following. Uh, this can be Easily done by uh, if you multiply the minus g mu nu p square plus the uh, one minus one c d mu times uh, minus g uh, okay new row uh, new row uh, plus one minus c e rho and p square, and we'll see the consequence. Okay. So then, uh, so first of all, what what we get is the first term is delta mu rho p square. And then second term what we have is one minus one over C. And then here we have the uh, P mu and P rho. Okay. Uh, sorry, it's equal to 
So that's the first time. Sorry, there's a minus sign here. Oh, sorry. So this is plus sign. So I just multiply this times this one, and this times this one. And next, what we have is this times this one will give you. Uh, what was that? So this time this will give you. What was, which time do we get? Oh gosh, isn't that one or C? Sorry, let, let, let me do that. Uh, P mu, B rho, yeah, it looks to me one over C. And then this times this will give you what? This time this give you plus A, plus 1 minus 1 over C, 1 minus C, and this one P, P nu times P nu cancel with P square, you get the P mu and P rho. They agree? They agree? Are you guys following? And then what we have is the, uh, so this one will give you one, plus minus one over c plus b minus c plus one right and then this one cancel minus one cancel with this guy and this one cancel with this guy right and so therefore take all cancel and what's left is this guy okay you understand so therefore so therefore uh what we have. So this is essentially this guy is inverse matrix of this guy up to this scaling. Up to this scaling. P square square. Okay? So therefore, so therefore what we have is that the so in general, so this uh, D we knew. So this is a case. So essentially, so this is the inverse matrix up to scaling of p square. So you have to multiply one over p square essentially to get the delta i uh, delta matrix uh, identity matrix. And then you just use uh, uh, epsilon prescription. You just add the epsilon prescription. Any question at this moment? So this is the uh, photon pro um, photon propagator. Any question at this moment? So far, it's okay. Okay, if not, I'm going to a bit talk about the interaction interaction picture. So so far we talk about the we talk about the uh, the free theory So far, we talk about free theory, and the free theory. What we did is the determine Hilbert space, essential Polk space. Uh, free theory. So what we did is the determine Hilbert space. Um, okay. Uh, canonical quantization. Uh, 
uh, quantization. So what we did is also determine Hilbert space. Essentially, it's called Hawk space, Hilbert space, which means the essentially you need to act the creation operator on the vacuum. So there's a Hawk space. Determine uh, the final property. So, so that's what we did for free theory. So free theory for scalar uh, Dirac. So electromagnetic field. So that's today, today's, and then love to lecture, and then whatever, before that, scalar. That's what we did. So free theory is a free. Free means that if you have particles, particle is very free. So he, he, can, he can just freely move. Free theory means freely move. So if you have a particle, it acts on one particle state. You act on AP, I mean, if it is a fermion, you have a polarization. Fermion, the uh, Dirac and the electron is there is a polarization vector, but I'm not going to explain. You just have a momentum P, uh, momentum P, and then you just, just move without interaction. Freely move with mo momentum P. That's one state, one particle state. So therefore, the, as you, we will learn, so if you can have a propagator, so this is people just write that x, y, u, like, and p. So this is equal to p square uh, minus m square over i in the, in the free scale theory. So this, you, you only have the, this kind of line because there is no interaction. So the particle just go, go straight. Without interaction, just with momentum p. So just just straight, uh, just move with momentum p. So that's a one particle state in free theory. However, uh, so so it's a kind of boring. Just just go straight. Just the particle just straight forward. And the, the life becomes like 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 your uh, human being. Life becomes interesting because when once you have interaction, okay? If you have the friend and so on, so you can interact with friends. So the life become much richer. Likewise, so if you add some interaction term into the uh, Lagrangian Hamiltonian, the, the, the physics become much richer. And that's what we are going to learn. So, so far it's a free theory. It's a so, so simple and then life is boring. So there's no, like it's like a on on the earth you are only alone, no interaction with human being. But from now we are going to add this for instance Hamiltonian, you have a free Hamiltonian plus interaction. We we are going to add interaction term. So for instance in the Clarin Gordon case, so 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 essentially we just focus on this scalar theory. So this we focus on scalar theorem. So this is free Hamiltonian and interaction term. In the case of the scalar theory, so this H is a uh, Klein Gordon Hamiltonian plus uh, something like we just in the in, in the case of this the Pesky and Schroeder, we add this term. This is this is five four theory. It's called five four theory. So here, this is the interaction term, and we will see the consequence of this uh, this uh, interaction term by using so-called perturbation theory. So as I mentioned in, at the beginning of the lecture, so the ultimate goal uh, to, to in quantum field theory is to determine Hilbert space and all correlation function. All correlation function, uh, all correlation function. But if you add the interaction term, the, the, the physics is much richer. And so usually you cannot solve exactly. Uh, you, you cannot solve exactly, but um, uh, perturbation theory, so perturbation theory, 
So we are going to learn um, in a uh, QFT is that if you assume uh, lambda is very small, assume lambda coupling, so this lambda is called coupling constant. Coupling constant, lambda is very small, and then we will see the consequence of this uh, uh, and assume, and then we will quantum effect. Effect. Ah, uh, ah, uh, order by order. In lambda. In lambda. That's what we are going to do. So lambda, order by order means lambda is very small. So so lambda uh, plus lambda square and this quantum effect. So this whatever this. So maybe it's better not to write here. So we assume some uh, some physical quantity. We want to evaluate physical quantity. We want to evaluate. And we just have a class copies. And then plus lambda to the some, something, lambda square to something, uh, lambda cube to something. And these are the quantum effect. And we just want to uh, evaluate these quantity, lambda uh, sharp one, sharp two, sharp three, plus dot 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 dot. This this sharp one, sharp two, sharp three is order by order means it, that that's what it, what I meant by this quantum quantum uh, effect is encoded inside this sharp one, sharp two, sharp three. That's the perturbation theory. And this was first, uh, yeah, as you know, so the, this was developed by uh, Feynman, Schrodinger, Tomonaga. And then Dyson actually gives us a very simple prescription of what they are doing. So that's why it's called Dyson series. So this is what we're going to learn is the interaction picture. Uh, the, the Dyson series. So that's what we are going to do. So first, uh, so we want to evaluate a two-point function um, in scalar field with this FIFO theory. The FIFO theory. So. So we can generalize the, this in, uh, how to say interaction picture in the uh, direct field and the electromagnetic field, but, but first we focus on the simplest case, the scalar theory with five-fold interaction. And the goal, first goal, first goal, uh, first goal is evaluate two-point function as we did in free theory. But now here vacuum in interaction theory. This is vacuum in interacting theory. So this is not the same, so therefore be careful not the uh, omega is not the same as the vacuum of free theory. This is vacuum of free theory. Um, so we would like to understand the relation. So we would like to understand the relation between free theory and the vacuum interactive theory. We would like to understand the vacuum, the relation. To do that, we first define uh, the um, first define the the, the uh, interacting picture. Uh, so this is the operator. 
define interactive picture operator is the e to the i t h naught operator x e to the minus i t h naught. So this is the interaction picture uh, operator. So here I only use free Hamiltonian, so H0. H0 is free Hamiltonian, or essentially this is Craig Gordon Hamiltonian. But this is not full Hamiltonian. Full Hamiltonian includes H int. So, so that holds, so this is the interaction picture. The Heisenberg picture is this one. Um, so this is the Heisenberg picture, and this is interacting picture. Good. Okay. So that the difference between them is indeed so the Heisenberg picture is the difference between them is a plus. Uh, sorry. So when you write that like this way, uh, essentially I mean it's t equals zero. When I write like this way, always t equals zero. Um, All right, I think uh, I need to be careful. And usually uh, people just write down uh, and this is equal to uh, I define as the uh, u uh, t equal to zero operator i e x so u uh, t uh, zero uh, back so where the uh, u so u t t naught is defined as so this is definition as e to the plus i t minus t naught h naught e to the minus i t and minus t naught. Sorry, I think uh, there's a typo. Sorry. No, no, no. So I think this is okay. Sorry. So the difference between this interaction picture and then uh, just usual Heisenberg, Heisenberg picture operator is determined by this u operator. <laughs> U operator. Okay. The, 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 are, you, are you guys following? So here T naught, I just equal to zero. Okay. okay. And it, the reason why I introduced this interaction picture is that the, this interaction picture, we can just do the, the uh, chemical quantization. So here, again, I assume that the lambda is very small. 
So lambda is very small. So therefore, almost, if lambda is very small, the time transition almost dominated by this Hamilton, uh, the free Hamiltonian. So because lambda is very small, so this time is the, the contribution is very small. Okay. So therefore, almost the, the, the time transition is dictated by this H now. So therefore, this O i is almost dictated. Uh, I mean, H not almost dictated by. So that, that we want to, we like to understand this almost dictated uh, Hamiltonian and the, the full Hamiltonian. And the question is, what is the difference? That's how the, this perturbation theory will arise. So that we would like to understand the difference between O i and O. And also, um, another motivation is that this O i will uh, of uh, x and t of x of if you take derivative and this is equal to h naught acts on o i t x by usual manner. I think I just want to check the, my calculation more carefully. So about with sign. So so let me take a look at the. So just 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 a moment. I have to be careful about the, the sign and so on. Okay, good. Um, here I here, and since the H naught commute with this operator, so so H naught acts on O will give you the pi. So therefore, this is equal to um, uh, e to the uh, e to the i h uh, at t naught and a pi of x of uh, e to the minus i t h naught. So therefore, this is pi i of x. Okay. And also, you can again act on the same thing as. Um, Okay, then again, this one is h not acts on a pi i of uh, t x, and this this one. So 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 remember that the pi of x is just a uh, h not i of the o of x. Okay. So this is the um here. There is no time dependence. T equals zero part. Okay. At t equals zero part, uh, the pi can be defined like this. Likewise, uh, so h not can h not can commute with this operator. H not can act on pi pi of x. That will give you just a crank order equation. So therefore, this will give you the uh, delta square uh, minus uh, sorry e m not. I don't go the equation acts on a uh, phi of x and the e to the i t h naught e to the minus i t h naught. Okay. So therefore, this one will give you the crank order equation uh, minus m square. Sorry, is it the plus m square? Sorry, plus I think plus m square. Uh, sorry, not O. Sorry, sorry. I'm very sorry. It's not O. Phi. Phi. Sorry. Sorry. This is Phi. Sorry. <sighs> phi in scalar theory. Uh, phi is so suddenly Phi up here. Sorry. Phi of I of Tx is equal to zero. So that's what you get okay sorry i make a lot of mistakes today, so i'm very very sorry so therefore since it, it satisfies the crime mode equation the phi i it admits the the 
it admits the the uh, just the usual uh, the canonical quantization uh, this uh, can, uh, the free transformation phi of x can be written e q p to pi of q one over square two e p um, a i of p so now i means the this interaction picture uh, this i stands for interaction e to the minus i p dot x plus i dagger of p e to the i p dot x and then this one will satisfy um and p square plus m square is equal to zero so that's what the uh, So, so sorry, 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 so p square minus, sorry. What am, so there's a typo in my lecture, notes, sorry. There's so many typo in my lecture, notes, I'm very sorry. Okay, so now, so, so here AIP means that the, uh, uh, You need to sandwich by, I mean, yeah, time evolution, yeah. So here, so therefore, uh, so we can just define. So it's a, this phi i is like a uh, the inter. So so the, the here, so you can just define the vacuum of this uh, free theory, free theory as the a i of p. Acts on so, so this is a vacuum of free theory, a vacuum of H naught can be understood. Okay. So this can be understood H naught, and but, but the this and this A I plus of P will give you a one particle state in the In terms of H now, but however, uh, however, uh, we know that the the full operator full uh, Hamiltonian is H instead of H now. Okay, so therefore, what we want to do is that the so this true vacuum, this is true vacuum, and the true operator. So we want to approximate. This one, so we want to understand the relation between this one and the phi i. So that's uh, we want to understand the relation between these two. What is the relation between these two? So that's the uh, uh, the answer is given by Dyson series. Answer is given by that one. Okay. Uh, so therefore, uh, what we want to do is that the to analyze the difference between uh phi and phi i, phi and phi i, and this true vacuum and and just ordinary uh, free theory vacuum. And the difference between them, O and O i, is dictated by this U operator. Okay, so we want to understand what this U does. So to do to understand that one, so first we take the derivative of the this U operator. Oh, maybe I, I can continue here. DDT of U, T, and T naught. So that uh, so it's super easy to perform minus I E to the I T minus T naught H naught minus H zero. Um, 
I saw it said a wire on the writing of these guys. Yes. So uh, a minus h naught plus uh, h e to d plus i t minus t naught uh, e to d i t minus t naught h sorry h naught here. And this is equal to uh, minus i h interact and then u to the t t naught. So that's the uh, equation as you you operate is satisfied. Oh sorry. I'm sorry, so sorry, sorry. It's, uh, I'm... Why am I doing this? Such a silly mistake. Okay, so you have to be careful about order. Minus i e to the plus i t minus t naught h naught minus h naught plus uh, h and e to the minus i t minus t naught h. So that's the order. And this is equal to minus e3 uh, i t minus t naught h naught. So h interact. So this is h interact. And then uh, e3 minus i t naught, uh, sorry, t minus t naught times u operator. Sorry. Okay. And this is equal to minus e to the so it's sandwiched by by h naught operators. So I call it h i, okay? U to the t and t naught, where h i is defined by e to the i t minus t naught h naught, and then h int e to the minus. Yeah, I mean, essentially, I call it this one is equal to hi. Sorry, that's much easier to write down. So this is the equation that you operate to satisfy. I'm sorry for, for, for confusion. Somehow, lecture notes sometimes has a typo, but this, I should follow the... Okay. So this... Hamiltonian HI is called the uh, interaction Hamiltonian. So be careful that the so the reason why I did this one is that the Usually H naught and H do, do not commute. H naught and H do not commute because of this inter. Oh, I, I already erased H H naught plus H int, and usually H naught and H interact do not commute. Okay, usually. So therefore, you have to be careful about order. Okay. And we want to solve this differential equation. And unfortunately, I don't think I have a time. Um, I just give you an answer. Uh, so ut can be solved like this way. 1 plus minus i to the t0 t uh, dt1 h1 t1 plus minus i square dt2, uh, so dt1, uh, no, dt2, uh, t0 and t, and then t0 and t2, dt1, unfortunately I cannot write down, so I will write down here, h i and t1, plus dot dot dot. And if you take time derivative, time derivative, you can get the uh, minus i to the h i 
And the next time, if you take the derivative, what's left is this guy. So therefore, you can just look at the this one is equal to, uh, if you take, take time derivative of this guy, uh, let's stop. Sorry, uh, I will I will do this. I will review this part next time. Uh, you can just check this one is equal to this one. Okay, so let's stop here. And as you can easily see, so H i has a lambda lambda the force, right? Lambda uh, sorry, lambda term, and lambda, and then this is lambda square, and then lambda cube, and so on. That will appear. The already perturbation theory will appear here. Okay, that, that's I will recap ne next time about this part. Sorry about the running uh, so fast. So so sorry. So this part is so I, I just run in rush, but the next time I will review. So don't worry about it. Any question from the week? So this part I will review next time. So don't worry if you don't understand. So before then, any question from Tencent, uh, students at Tencent side, online side? First, I want to ask. Okay, if you have a question, you can ask question at the office hour, uh, students on Tencent side. Is it okay? So I will stop recording.